hello, my name is Rich Coleman. I'm the host for The Prevention Corner, and we are going to host a very special program tonight that many of our families, mine included, have been impacted by cancer. We have the American Cancer Society who is here with us today here in our area of Washtenaw County with two important events that we're going to talk about that's coming up. But we're also going to talk about the importance of what families and individuals should know about cancer screening, the things that are going on with our all of the efforts that are going on and some of the research that's going on right now, particularly with uh, breast cancer and mammograms, that's been a really interesting topic that we'll discuss as well. But we want to share with you how important it is to have an awareness for your family genetically, things that are going on in your family that might be impacted, but what you should do if you are a victim. And it's important not to be afraid, but to take action so that you know what to do and your family members around you to support the initiative. We are here today with Cynthia. Cynthia, thank you so much for being thank here. Thank you, Rich. I'm delighted to be here and to help you um, educate our watchers, our viewers, mm -hmm. about uh, the importance of early detection and treatment of cancer. Well, tell us first as we're talking about the American Cancer Society and all of our nonprofits and our groups like this have gone through what the economy has done with downsizing and shifting around and even in the very location that we're at today. Uh, you used to be in this area, but it, you've moved now and you're in different areas. But we are a part of the Great Lakes Division. That's with the correct. American Cancer That's Society. Right. And tell us about the organization. Give us a little brief overview okay. of the history of our Michigan and our, South, and our Great Lakes Division. I can do that. Um, the American Cancer Society is a national organization dedicated to eradicating cancer. Mm -hmm. And as we bring that down and narrow it down to Washtenaw and to Celine and uh, our immediate area, um, it's important to know that we are the Great Lakes Division. You're right, we used to be across yeah. the, um, the parking lot from the studio. And uh, because of the economic uh, difficulties that we're having, the American Cancer Society um, needs to eliminate bricks and mortar. Sure. So as not to impact the programs and services that we provide for people all across the nation and right here um, surrounding the studio and mm -hmm. in Washtenaw County. Mm -hmm. We're everywhere. Yeah. Um, we're, we're even an international organization and it all rolls up or rolls down into we're right here mm -hmm. but we're in the business of eradicating cancer mm -hmm. and diminishing suffering from the disease. You know and I've been so impressed because as I said that has, this has impacted our family. Uh, both my parents I lost to uh, heart disease and an older sister to pancreatic cancer. Mm -hmm. So I understand the dynamic once that acknowledgement that yes this is what it is and the love and support that we wrapped around uh, family members to be supportive of them, but also know that the research is so critically important. When we talk about particularly the fundraising, because when we talk about all of the various events that's going on, this research that's so critical, why is it important for us, even in this down time with economics as they are, to still support the American Cancer Society and all of the various things that's going on, our research that's mm -hmm. in place, there's still so much to do. Well, um, Rich, you have really hit the nail on the head when you say we can't stop trying to find cures. Um, we know from the research that the American Cancer Society has done over the course of almost uh, a century, uh, we know what causes two-thirds of all cancers. The most difficult thing that we do is to impact lifestyle changes in order to not have a diagnosis of cancer in the first place. For example, um, the, the society has established the link between smoking t um, cigarettes and lung cancer. Mm -hmm. Another example of what the American Cancer Society has done in funding nearly 50 Nobel um, winners for research is the link between uh, genetics and breast cancer. Um, we also know that early detection and treatment of cancer will sa dramatically save lives. 
we've established um, the PSA for uh, prostate yes. cancer screening. Mm -hmm. um, I have my little checklist here of, of bullet points. I didn't hit on uh, uh, good nutrition and physical activity, and that's mm -hmm. something that we provide in the schools, even at the elementary age, in what we call a mini relay kit. We, uh, we ask schools to embrace a, a four-part module that we can just hand to a teacher and say, oh, here's mini relay in a box, and you can take these lesson plans and talk about the dangers of tobacco, good nutrition and physical activity, good sun safety. So when we come back to why is it so important that we not minimize um, our research, and why is it so important that we amass more volunteers and continue to raise money is because this is all about saving lives. This isn't um, about maintaining a bricks and mortar yes. facility. Mortar, I sound yeah, like yeah. I'm from <laughs> Philadelphia. Um, but yeah. uh, I am from Pennsylvania, oh, yeah. so I have these, uh, these quirky sayings. Sure. Um, so it's very important that when we're talking to people about the American Cancer Society, that they understand mm -hmm. that we want people to stay well get well, we need to find cures, mm -hmm. and we need to fight back. And so it's a comprehensive package. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, what I, what I like about all of the various groups that we've had a chance to work with, the National Kidney Foundation, um, the, uh, the Autism Society, mm -hmm. all of the various groups that's looking at cause and effect and the things that are important to understand genetically mm -hmm. as well as environmentally. Uh, because one of the things that I clearly saw in a lot of the research working with the Kidney Foundation, and this is similar with the American Cancer Foundation in society, is the disparities mm -hmm. that go along with all of the various ethnic groups with understanding what is important for them. Yes, We yes. worked with a lot of our local faith communities to host resource meetings and workshops and things that we can do from a variety of perspectives Talk to us about this study that's in, that, well, that the Great Lakes has embarked you're, on. You're it, talking my language yeah. here, Rich. I was so glad that you asked me to bring some information mm -hmm. regarding um, what we do right here in the Great Lakes Division. And so I brought our annual report that is available online. People can access and, and us. And we're going to put that information yes. up on the screen with the website, contact information, and this report that we're talking about right now, mm -hmm. it is in a PDF file that is up on the website great information, but talk to us about this, this study. Well, one of my favorite things that ties perfectly with the faith-based communities is our Body and Soul program. And since uh, my office is currently um, in Southfield, um, I'm exposed to a lot of my co-workers and we're, um, who are working in downtown Detroit and all around the cosmopolitan Detroit area, as well as Livingston and Washington. We're producing 70 Relay for Life's out of that um, central location in Southfield. But here's where I'm going with sure. that. Um, we do a body and soul program, and my um, uh, friend um, Von Seal works every day with faith-based communities in our um, service area to bring programs to the churches. And mm -hmm. one of our points of pride is that this year, 190 churches utilized our Body and Soul program. And it's, it was developed specifically for African-American churches, mm -hmm. and it promotes the benefits of making healthy lifestyle choices. And so if we come back to where I say we, we shouldn't smoke, we should eat our fruits and vegetables, mm -hmm. we should be physically active, those, those talking points and those lifestyle um, decisions dramatically impact uh, not only the American Cancer Society, but heart, um, the American Lung Association and the Kidney Foundation, because those are major contributors to almost every um, uh, life-threatening disease or mm -hmm. chronic illness. Yeah, and, you know, and that's at the core of this outreach is really understanding the dynamics of who we are. And, and the things that's important for us. And sometimes we take it for granted 
and with our family history and the things that we have seen our families mm -hmm. uh, our loved ones and our those uh, those those patriarch and matriarchs what they've experienced as far as health dynamics sometimes we don't really put it in perspective genetically i'm prone to that so i need to understand it and then i i need to know and probably the most important gift that i can give you this evening and i can give our viewers mm -hmm. um, is this simple little card and access to information um, i'm a lowly community representative my job is to represent our communities to the American Cancer Society and conversely to represent the American Cancer Society to our communities. And I don't have all the answers, but when I was learning to fly an airplane, I was taught you don't have to, yeah. you don't have to have all the answers, but yeah. you need to know where to find them. Right. Yeah. And so I carry this little card with me and, and it's so valuable to know to go to cancer.org. Mm -hmm. Cancer.org is there for us. Obviously, it's a website and it's 24-7. But more importantly, I think, is our toll-free number that our fundraising efforts helps to maintain that is operated out of Austin, Texas. Mm -hmm. And we're there 24-7. And you can call and talk to a real person mm -hmm. in well, the middle me, of the me, night yeah, if you want to. Let me give that to. number, that number. <laughs> and we're going to have this up on the screen in addition to cancer dot org mm -hmm. is 1-800-227-2345. Again, 1-800-277-2345. That's the... 227. I beg your pardon. 227. Yes. Let's say 227. that again. 1-800-227-2345. We'll make sure we have the right one there on the screen there. Uh, so that you can see and, con and contact this number 24-7. 24-7. available. And you know what? Sometimes people, um, I pass these out almost frivolously, even mm -hmm. though it's important. But, you know, I, I go through those all the time, and I say, here, here is a gift of empowerment. You, from now on, if someone comes to you, Rich, and says, I've been diagnosed with cancer, well, guess what? You're not helpless anymore. You don't have to Good be point. afraid, and you don't have to say, oh, my gosh, what are we going to do? I'm afraid mm -hmm. you're going to die. That's where I was 16 years ago mm -hmm. when I was a volunteer, and I was invited to be part of the American Cancer Society. I was haunted by the fact that probably 30 years ago now, um, an 18-year-old young man who would... Um, decided that my husband as a substitute teacher was going to be his best friend, David was diagnosed with cancer and I was absolutely helpless. And I was an important department store manager sure. and I didn't know what to do for David. I was helpless yeah. and he would come to our home and he would watch TV with us and I, was, I stayed busy because I didn't know what, didn't to, know do. what to do. I was afraid mm -hmm. that David was going to die. And I, <clears throat> when I found the American Cancer Society 16 years ago, someone said to me, so why would you want to fight back against cancer? Well, I want to fight back for David. This is something that I can do to get rid of my guilty conscience because my outreach to David mm -hmm. when he was battling cancer his second time was to say, well, you know, I don't know what to say to him, but I, I have to go see him. I'm afraid he's going to die. And so I left my, my job and said, here's my plan. I'm going to take a new baseball cap on my lunch hour, and I'm going to go over to the hospital mm -hmm. and, and see David and say, hey, David, how's it going? Here's a new cap. So you interacted with him. You didn't make him feel like he was going at it alone. Well, you yeah. know what? The tragedy of this story is this, mm -hmm. and this is why I want to warn our, our viewers. Sure. This is what we can do differently now because we have Relay for Life, mm -hmm. and we know the American Cancer Society. I went to the hospital. I went looking for David. He wasn't in his room. I asked the nurse, where's David? And she said, well, I think they transferred him upstairs. I went upstairs and David was not there. And you know what? They had transferred David to Mott Children's Hospital uh, that morning. Mm -hmm. And I never, never saw, saw David him. again alive. Mm -hmm. And so, 
When this American Cancer Society Relay for Life thing came along, I said, this is something that I can do in David's memory. Now, what we need to do and what we need to take up the challenge today so is So tell me, this. How, have you been in, for the last 16 years, I you've have, been involved in the re relays? Yes. That's fantastic. I, I That's was fantastic. a volunteer team recruitment coordinator yeah. in 1996 yeah. for an unknown event in Lenawee County. Yeah. And this year, I am delighted to be able to be part of starting a brand new event in mm -hmm. Celine. There have been relays all around us. Now we've got <laughs> before we go. Now we have two events coming up. We do in our area, right? One in Celine. Yes. July 30, 30th, 30th and thirty first, and then in October. October the twenty second, we will have a making strides against breast cancer that will be um, here in Ypsilanti. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called Strides of Ann Arbor, but it is indeed going to be held at the golf course in Ypsilanti. Uh, okay, and we're going to put that information up on the screen as well, so you'll have all of the dates and times uh, how important this is to be involved. But, but tell us right now, this is, this is what's unique about preparing for the relays. And uh, as I was at the website, you can create teams mm -hmm. and you can, uh, uh, in honor of a loved one, mm -hmm. uh, in support of someone who is going through the challenge. How does that happen? What, what do they need to do in order to establish a team? Because you can register at the you website. Can, you can register online at relayforlife.org. Mm -hmm. and if, or if all you remember today is cancer.org, you can get there eventually. Sure. You can sure. get to our Celine website. And a team, um, most our most successful teams are indeed um, in honor of someone who is surviving cancer mm -hmm. or someone who has lost their battle with cancer. And so visit us at cancer.org, relayforlife.org, or call me on my cell phone, and mm -hmm. that number is 517-262. Four four eight nine. Again, we're going to put that information up on the screen as well, because I'm sure a lot of people will be in touch with you. But tell us about that day. Take me to okay. Take that, you that, to that day when we're we'll preparing for. Okay. Uh, got my team together now, and and we're getting ready for the big walk. Uh, and and I know it's a very emotional. I've been to a number of the various events similar to this, and the that preparation uh, that you see with the preparing for that initial walk and launching, what is that scene like? What is, well, I know I, it's, it's extremely easy emotional, for, but. For me, it's yeah. easy to say it's magic. And if people do nothing else but come to the event at mm -hmm. Liberty School Track on July 30th and 31st, trust me, it is magic and you, it, you'll be hooked. Sure. That's how I sold this for the last 16 years. Sure. Relay for Life is a team event and every Relay for Life across the nation, and there are 5,000 of them now, mm -hmm. starts with a survivor victory lap. And we have a very powerful story that our co-chair, Jeff um, Dowling, wrote to uh, implore people to come be part of Relay for Life. Um, the survivors cut the ribbon. We have a reception for them immediately following the survivor victory lap. And teams of people who have come and prepared to camp out for 24 hours four hours and take turns walking around the track to show support for survivors will surround that track and applaud the cancer survivors and their 1.5 caregivers that walk with them yeah. for that opening lap. Another very significant part of Relay that um, is done uh, at every Relay is a luminaria ceremony at dusk. Show, show, mm. Let's show our audience. Let How me tell important you. that is. This was really you. unique as we were talking about this okay. in preparation. In 1996, yeah. we, um, I, I swear we folded down about 1,300 of these bags, and I know it's making a lot of noise. <laughs> no problem. But we don't even have to fold them down and make them neat anymore. Uh -huh. I'm going to paint you a picture here of what a luminaria ceremony looks like. And well, how it's a, a real food. candle or that battery? Um, this is a simple sandwich bag with a little nest of sand in the bottom and a candle in here mm -hmm. will become a loved one for someone. And I meant to bring my market markers because we could have done a show and tell. And on the front we would want to say, this is in memory of David Smith 
who lost his battle with cancer mm -hmm. mm, probably 30 years ago. Sure. And we can draw pictures, or we can um, simply write the name of the loved one on there. And there will be probably a thousand of these lining the track at Liberty School um, on July the 30th at 9.30ish mm -hmm. when it gets dusk. And we invite everyone who has made a donation of $10 for Illuminaria to come and light their own candle. Um, at our first relay, I was obsessed with making sure that we had teams, because mm -hmm. that was my volunteer job. Sure. And then I was obsessed with making sure that we had Luminaria candles, so that we could represent our loved ones who were either battling cancer mm -hmm. or who had lost their battle. Mm -hmm. And so I bought one for Grandma Pepple, and I bought one for David, and I had about five or six of them. And I remember my husband, who is pretty shy, um, he grabbed me by the arm at the beginning of the ceremony and said, come on, right now, we have to go light our candles, yeah. because we were reading off the names in alphabetical order. And I thought, well, yes, we have Grandma Pepple, and the only reason we have a candle for her, I can say this, is because... Um, I, because she did die from cancer and we wanted to remember her but um, I thought you know why is my husband dragging me across this damp field mm -hmm. at dusk to go light Grandma Pepple's candle because she was really kind of cranky <laughs> and, and no one would have bought a candle right, for right. her except me mm -hmm. and imagine imagine hundreds of people huddled around a paper bag at dusk, mm -hmm. and I, I, um, I remember saying, oh my gosh, what have we done yeah. for this community? And that's why I'm just delighted to be here with you, to yeah. extend this invitation to people to be You know what's so neat this. about this, because when you see something like this in its full scope, uh, and when you're there experiencing it, it takes you to the moment for those loved ones that you've missed, and the things that represent the memory yes and that's what's so important about those who we've lost to cancer yes but also the ones that we're helping and supporting mm -hmm. now yes that yes. we don't forget them and we keep that in perspective and, and the the other walk that's coming up in October uh, similar type of format with luminaries um, it's and a well is this one different it's different um, both relay for life and making strides against breast cancer that will be in October are platforms for us to not only remember loved ones, but also to give life-changing information. Mm -hmm. We use this as our, our stage for mission delivery, and I noticed Sasha, our volunteer entertainment coordinator for the Celine event, mm -hmm. dropped in a, a, a Dangers of Tobacco lab, and sure. she dropped in a Cancer Jeopardy um, lap and so we will literally for 24 hours have the opportunity to give the life-saving information that you're asking me mm -hmm. to um, share in 30 minutes yeah, um, yeah. we can we can do that more um, in a more fun way and extensively at Relay for Life mm -hmm. and at Making Strides then the um, the look of that is completely different from a Relay for Life. Relay for Life is 24 hours it's a team event. Uh, Making Strides Against Breast Cancer is um, about a, a 5K walk on a Saturday morning mm -hmm. in the autumn. And it, again, is team-based. It is a fundraiser specifically for breast cancer research mm -hmm. and programs and services. It's the only activity that the American Cancer Society does that uh, restricts the funds for breast cancer, breast cancer. specifically. Now, with the, the way the walks and the relays that are, are set up, could you or your team just come out to be a be in a portion of it, or do they are they required to be there for the whole time or a portion of the time? Well, thank you for asking yeah. that. Um, in our first year, well, in every year, we want people to know that it's open to the public. It's a family-oriented um, event, and we want people to be there. Now, ideally, we'll get a, we will have time to get a few more teams together. A team can be two, three, ten, a hundred people. However, you define a team of people mm -hmm. that wants to come and hang out together for 24 hours. Sure. 
Most of the fundraising for Relay for Life is done in advance of the event, and mm -hmm. that is kind of a celebration then of life and celebration for what the teams have raised in advance sure. of the event. Um, <clears throat> but especially in a first year, I it would implore people to come visit a Relay for Life. If it isn't the Celine event, there's one in Dundee. We had one in Manchester. Mm -hmm. We have 5,000 of them. So yeah, go to huge. Relay and, for and Life. And when you go to cancer.org yeah. and you go to events, you can look up Michigan and mm -hmm. you can see all you of the can events zero listed in on your zip code. and uh, mm -hmm. put it in by zip code, but yeah. there are just so many things yes. that are going on. Yes. Uh, you know, with the site that is absolutely great for uh, those who are interested in learning more about uh, the Cancer Society, mm -hmm. how they can participate in the walks, as well as all of the nuances of getting to help family members and friends. Right. You know, those are always so critically important. And, and, and when you have that avenue where people don't know what to do to help someone, they can call that 800 number. Yes. 800-227-2345 yes. to get information. And that that's a helpline. Mm -hmm. so that Absolutely. individuals can get There's access to those resources. There's a real person there to talk to you. Yeah. That's so valuable. Um, and I followed my own advice when my mother-in-law called in, uh, from Pennsylvania uh, and said she had to, go to the ho had to go have a test done and they thought she had a rare cancer uh, on her kidneys. Mm -hmm. And I, my husband said, mom called and said, she was going to the hospital and she thinks she has this. Well, I turned around to my computer and typed it, went to cancer.org, but it took me a split second to figure that out. And that's when I realized people don't pay attention to these cards yeah. until yeah. they need it. Mm -hmm. And then they're going to come to you and say, Rich, yeah. what am I going to do? See, we've come full circle. And you're going to say, let's go right now and call yeah. our American Cancer Society and find out mm -hmm. how they can help us. Yeah, and I think that's that's the empowerment of this resource and the ability to network with faith communities, uh, all of our service clubs. Yes. Uh, you know, a lot of them that we interact with, mm -hmm. uh, that we can put information out. Again, we've got an event coming up here in the township with National Night Out that we've invited to yes. come out and host a resource table so that family members and community members mm -hmm. will know where to get access to information right. that is so powerful it is you can only tack so much on the front of your refrigerator right. but this needs to be one of those things <laughs> you know and i thought about that too it's so like a refrigerator magnet i was just thinking yeah, that yeah uh, but these are the types of things that you can put cancer.org in your favorites mm -hmm. on your laptop and now that the smartphones have yes. access ipads and all of those devices that we have that we can get access to the internet in a heartbeat you can find information yes well, Cynthia, we're getting ready to wrap up, and uh, we're going to be putting information up on the screen about all of these various events that are coming up, particularly these two, uh, the Relay for Life, Life of Celine. Celine that's coming up yes. on the 30th and 31st, and again, we're going to have that information up on the screen, as well as the information coming up for our October event. Which is Making Strides Against Breast Cancer, and that actual event is October the 22nd, mm -hmm. but we have an informational breakfast coming up um, on August the 11th. And is that open to the public? It is by invitation. So should they call your they specific call number? They should call me. Okay, and we'll and put that I number will, up. Because we will be sending out the invitations mid-July for that breakfast that is the day before my Lenaway Relay for Life. Okay, you're busy. <laughs> Well, yeah. again, we uh, we've downsized yeah. buildings, and yeah. uh, but we're we're still functioning. Right. Uh, we're we're treading water, but well, we're doing well. Cynthia, <laughs> thank you so much for coming on the Prevention thank Corner. You. We're going to have this information again up on the screen about all of these events that are coming up and the great resources. We found a new friend that we're going to put in the mix with all of our efforts here in Pittsfield Township and throughout the community, with the American Cancer Society and the efforts that are underway. We encourage you to come out and be a part of the walks that are coming up. Get access to the information. Don't be afraid of information sharing. This is what this is about. Again, 1-800-227-2345.
2345. And we're going to put Cynthia's direct contact information up yes. so you can reach her as well about the upcoming event in August uh, for the October event. The uh, Making Strides. Making Strides. Making, making strides, strides Against Breast Cancer, October 22nd. But we want you to come to an info meeting on August the 11th August for the 11th. that one. Fantastic. So call me. <laughs> Thank you again so much. Thank you for tuning in to the Prevention Corner. We're going to have this information up on the screen. We'll see you at the next episode. Have a great day.